guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Customs. So today I'm sharing with you this Age of Apocalypse Wolverine statue that I finished painting up uh, for someone and it was produced by DXA Designs and sculpted by Sheridan Deuce. Now, I am a huge fan of Age of Apocalypse and when I saw this, I was just absolutely for it. I mean, this is probably my favorite Wolverine statue out there from any company or any garage kit ever produced and I guess that's only because I'm a... Uh, biased with uh, Wolverine from Age of Apocalypse because I just love the story. So when I saw this and I was asked to paint it up, I was like, yes, definitely. I actually wish I could own this one and the Jean Grey that came together in the set. I'll show those together, you know, at the end of the video, but sadly it wasn't in the cards. But DXA is actually making a Nate Grey and that's one I want more than anything. But at least I got to paint this one up. Really great sculpt, really great statue. It's absolutely phenomenal. I love that DXA designs actually use the infinite soldier bases for these characters because you know these days we see x-men characters on sentinels all the time it's always on sentinels so you know age of apocalypse they didn't have the sentinels they had the infinite soldier so i love the idea that these bases are on these characters and something different so you know it's like it is a wolverine statue he's on the robot but it's definitely from that storyline so it's kind of cool um so we're going to get a little bit closer. We'll break down everything I did. It's pretty much a straightforward kit. There was only one thing that I really wanted to change on it, but it was just beautiful. Uh, I also did do a garage kit review on this. I will link that in the bottom in the description. So if you want to see the kit in the raw form, you go check that out. So let's get a little bit closer and we'll go over everything. Okay, so uh, pretty much uh, if you watch the kit review video, you would know that the upper body was separated from the lower body like up to here and then this was separated to there and uh, his arms are removable his head is removable and he does come in and out of the base now I didn't like the idea that this upper body is kind of leaning forward with a magnet trying to hold him in there it really didn't make any sense so when the client asked me to do it I said you know what we're gonna make him one solid piece because if we leave a magnet in here even if I got a really super strong magnet that could hold up all this weight up here I, you know, I said over time it's possible the magnet could lose force and this sucker could go crashing down and you lose everything. So he was like, no, definitely make it one solid piece. So I did paint them separated and at the end what I did is I used A's and glue and I glued it into the body. And then now he is one solid piece so he's not going anywhere. And the other thing too about the kit is uh, even though Onage does a great job with their kits, the magnets were very weak in this arm. It was very, very weak in this arm and it would wobble. So I figured, you know what, if I'm going to take out the magnets out of that one, I took out the magnets out of this one. So I took out magnets on both arms and in the upper body, and I actually put in new stronger magnets in there. I think the magnets they were using were probably like N40s or N42s. I used the, the stronger magnets were like N50 and N52. So these arms are in there for good, and it's really, really cool. Um, other than that, uh, once we pretty much got past that, it was just a matter of priming up and painting. So... He's all in garage kit flesh tone paint, as you can see. And this was taken from the Weapon X uh, cover from uh, Age of Apocalypse. So, as you notice, he has no eyeballs or pupils because a lot of times in the comics, especially Age of Apocalypse, he was drawn without eyes. There was always white eyes when he was uh, raging. And then even on the cover, he didn't have eyes. So I, I told the client, I said, you know, if we're going to keep it true to the comic and we're going to paint him gritty and make him look like it, let's not put eyes on there. And he was like, yeah, definitely, don't put any eyes on there. So it feels more like Wolverine to me. I'm Personally, I'm a fan of Wolverine without eye, uh, eye pupils because, especially when he's raging, most of the time in the comics, even with the max, he never has eyes. It's always white. So, personally, that's just a preference, you know, for me. I know everybody else has their different opinions, but, you know, that's pretty much it. Now, he is sculpted with hair. You can kind of see, like, a lot of the hair on his arms. So, what I did is I used some browns and blacks, and I did very light dry brushing to bring out all that hair. Because if I was to sit there and try to paint each individual strand, it wouldn't look right. So... Plus, we wanted to go for like that gritty look, that really, really gritty look like the cover of Weapon X. So that's kind of what we went with. So you can see I brought out some of the veins too with a little bit of blue veins here and there. Uh, the teeth and everything, you know, I made it white with some of the pink gums and then I kind of gloss coated it. His hair does have a little bit of hint of blue. I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera, but the cover does have a little bit of blue in his hair. So I kind of followed that as much as I could. Um, as far as the... Missing hand here, this is actually Alclad Chrome, but what I did is I dulled it down uh, with uh, some of the gloss paint so because the client didn't really want it too chromed out, so that kind of worked out pretty good there. 
Now these claws came with uh, the kit and I absolutely love these claws. They did a phenomenal job on each. They are real metal claws and they go into the hand perfectly. So what I did is I did buff them out as much as I could but the only problem is, is I, there was only so much I can buff them out and uh, I really didn't think of going too too uh, shiny. If I could I would have but that's as far as I could bring them out. Uh, and they just they're beautiful beautiful looking claws. So it's a really great kit now as far as his blue outfit I don't know if you guys can see it in the camera as much, but there is no black in this blue whatsoever It's all browns and purples in there So I didn't want to use any black whatsoever So if you were to look up close you probably would see more of a brownish in all the shading because I wanted to make it look a little bit more I guess you could say leathery blue I don't know how well it's showing up in the camera, but it's just better to do that way, you know, than to put just like blue and then black. So I kind of wanted to use all browns or purples and that was it. Now as far as the reds uh, up here for his uh, tiger striped stuff, or whatever you want to call them, uh, it's kind of like a red leather. Uh, so what I did is I mixed up a, a red and then I kind of mixed in some mahogany with it and I came out with this like reddish leather because I didn't want it to be too red where it would pop in, you know, and really jump out at you. I wanted to keep them very gritty like the cover. Now, as far as his belt goes, what I did is I did a little bit of a texture in there, and I wanted to give it like kind of like a leathery belt. So I did a lot of, like a lot of sponge work, and then I did some airbrushing over it and more sponge work just to kind of make it, you know, a little bit of a leather belt. I didn't really want too many of his blues and reds to jump out at you as much as, you know, you might see it in the comics. So that's pretty much what uh, where I went with Wolverine. Now as far as the base goes, absolutely love the Infinite Soldier base. This base is really great. Uh, this head is magnetized into the body just for shipping. Uh, I didn't really have to magnetize it, but I figured it would be better. This piece right here uh, clicks in. If you watch the kit review, uh, I didn't actually magnetize this. I you just placed this in, but you could pop that out or I could ask the client later if he wants me just to glue it in, but whatever. So. As far as the base goes, uh, I painted this up in Spaztec Chrome. So what I did is, uh, there was really nothing to do to the base other than just prime it. So I primed it up, I made sure everything was smooth. I did a nice gloss coat of black all over the base. And then what I did is I used Spaztec uh, Chrome. And then I used a Spaztec Candy Clear Apple. Now, I am absolutely in love with this Spaztec uh, uh, paint so far. Especially even out of the rattle can. It really works out pretty well. So the client asked me, you know, he really wanted this to be like a uh, chromed out uh, robot armor. And he wanted it like a deep green. So I used the candy apple and the, it almost takes like a can and a half. Because when you do the candy apple over all the chrome, it's a very lightish green. So you got to actually do a couple layers. So it gets kind of costly to get this type of like, you know, green on it. But once I showed it to him, he was absolutely in love with it. So... Once we got the all of it green and everything was set, it was just a matter of doing all these little details of the metal, doing a little bit of details over here with change of greens, and then what I did is I did all washes and dry brushing to make all the metal look like it's kind of bent up and Wolverine cut it, and just make it look like a real robot got slashed up, as you can see, all over the place here. Really cool. Now, if you uh, look in the comic books, uh, he does have a black uh, pretty much piece right here, and then the neck is kind of like a silverish neck. So I just want to keep it as true to the comic as possible, so we went that route. And then the, the little eyeball right there is actually Alclad Chrome with Aqua Clear mixed in with some Badger uh, Magenta. It takes a little bit of like uh, building it up and making sure the chrome stays, but you get that kind of like glowish uh, magenta color on it. So, other than that, I mean, it's just a beautiful kit. Now, I did do a lot of these uh, pieces here. This is kind of like this rubber paint that I have. It's kind of, it's basically just like a grayish uh, black paint, but it looks like rubber when you paint it. And then I did all these little uh, copper stuff around in there, and it just worked out pretty cool. So, that is Age of Apocalypse Wolverine. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, I had a lot of fun working on this. It's a beautiful kit. It is just absolutely amazing sculpt. Sheridan did an amazing job. Uh, so uh, pretty much that's it. So what I'll do is at the end of this video, you'll see the Jean Grey and Wolverine set up together. So you guys can pretty much see how the whole kit group looks uh, together, all painted up. And you can let me know what you guys think. 
Okay, so here is the setup with Wolverine and Jean Grey together. It's a great Age of Apocalypse set from DXA Designs. Had a lot of fun working on these items, and I just kind of wanted to show you guys at the end of this video of them together. Normally, sometimes, you know, I get items where I can only see show you one item and I don't get the other, but since I've been working on a couple of these, it's kind of cool to finish them up and have them together as a nice display. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back with some more videos.